In terms of positioning, um, sorry, my head might get cut off so you can just see baby. This is baby Maya. She weighs three kilos, so she is the weight of a real baby. Um, and I use her for my antenatal session so moms can get a really good idea on how to hold the baby. Um, so our experience, so the reason why we're, I talk about positioning is because our experience of holding a baby that isn't us ours is like this and then when we have our own babies we found that moms were holding babies like this to try and breastfeed now this is what causes sore nipples so for holding your baby and positioning i want you to remember the acronym chin c h i n we're going to go through this one by one so when you hold your baby like this so this is the incorrect position I'm going to use chin to change this. So, um, and again, some moms do this to breastfeed as well. So the first thing, C, H, you want your, C, H, C, close. You want your baby nice and close to you. So although this may seem close because your baby's like, you know, on you, what we mean by close is the baby's tummy needs to be um, touching your tummy and facing your tummy. So you may hear the phrases tummy to mummy, mummy to tummy, tummy to tummy, those kind of things. And that is basically, so essentially you just turn your baby so the baby's back is facing away and the chest is touching your chest. So that's close. Um, next thing is uh, H, head free. So you want to keep the head free. Now the reason for that is because if you're doing this, so I want you guys to imagine this is, uh, not, not this actually, oh man, I thought I had a bottle of water here. Um, there we go, guys. Let me just grab. Okay. Imagine this is a bottle of water. Now, when we drink water, this is what we do. We flex our head back. Now, if somebody is blocking our head like this, we're going to find it really difficult to drink our water, right? So it's the same thing with a baby. When you're doing this and trying to help baby get onto the breast, you're stressing baby out, you're not allowing baby to flex its head back to open its mouth up wide and to get a wide um, breast tissue, um, a, um, a wide chunk of the breast tissue in its mouth. Because essentially that is the difference between the baby breastfeeding and nipple feeding and causing nipple trauma. So you want to make sure that the head is free. Now the way to do that is my favorite position is this, where you support the baby with the opposite arm to the breast that you're feeding from. And then you have this hand free to you know support your breast do a bit of hand expressing to tempt the baby but I do know for some moms this position is quite difficult especially if they've had a c-section or whatever so you can use cushions and pillows to support you down below or if you do find that um if you do find that this is the best position for you, just make sure that the side of the baby's face is resting on your arm and you're not doing this to the head, okay? As long as the head is free and able to flex back, it's gonna allow baby to get a wider latch. Another reason why we want the baby's head to be free is because sometimes when the baby latches on, the nose can can be can press onto the breast. The first person to know that the baby can't breathe is baby. So if they're struggling to breathe and the nose is compressed, as long as their head is free, they can just flex their head back and free up their nose and then they can breathe. So that's why you want to keep the head free. Third letter I, in line. So you want to make sure the back of the head, shoulder blades, the back and the legs are all in a straight line. You don't want the baby's body to be twisted like so, okay? So you don't want it to be like this. So this isn't a straight line. You want it to be like this and you don't want it to be like this, okay? Again, this is not a straight line with the back and the shoulder blade and the back of the legs. Now, the reason why you want to have babies body and everything in a straight line is and again I'm going to use lots of like examples so you guys can understand this imagine we are this is a burger and I want to take a bite of this burger now if I'm having to twist my head and take a bite of this burger it's quite difficult and my latch isn't as wide compared to the burger was in front of me I mean I've naturally got a very big mouth but can you see the difference between, and it's very strange, it's very difficult compared to, okay, 
So another reason why you want everything to be in a straight line, head not to be twisted, because if the breast is in front of your baby, they're able to get a massive wide mouth open and a massive chunk of the breast tissue in its mouth. And the last thing is nose to nipple. Now for nose to nipple, I'm going to use my Asian Homer Simpson. I don't know why this is made like this. Okay, now nose to nipple. Now remember, your baby does not know how to breastfeed. Your baby is using its senses to figure out how to breastfeed. So nose to nipple basically allows a bit of the senses to come into play. So if you basically, if you just ch do nipple to mouth, you're not allowing your baby to work for it. Um, and it's just making it very easy for baby to go like this. Okay, so baby won't flex his head back and things like that. Doing nose to nipple, um, and the last word is chin, um, the actual word chin, and using the chin to lead in, what you want to do is the nose to nipple, basically, you're rubbing the nipple up against the baby's nose. Baby smells it, might lick the breast a bit, touch the breast, and be enticed by it. And because you're kind of teasing them, they're going to go, ah, 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 and they're going to open their mouth up really wide. Now, the main thing here is you really want to wait for that mouth to open up as wide as a yawn, okay? If baby just opens mouth ever so slightly, don't put the nipple in because or the breast in because the baby will just nipple suck. What you want to do is um, wait for that mouth to open really wide like a yawn and then use the chin to lead in. So the chin touches the breast first because what that essentially is, so the difference between a good latch and a bad latch is the bottom lip. When a baby's nipple feeding, look at where the bottom lip is. When the baby's breastfeeding, look at where the bottom lip is. So if you lead in with the chin first, it basically aligns that bottom lip well away from the nipple. The nipple is aiming at the roof of the mouth and then baby latches on. Okay, so nose to nipple, wait for the fled to flex back, open mouth really wide, chin touches the breast and then you put your baby onto the breast. When you're initially breastfeeding, this may take a while. So you might find that your baby doesn't open mouth quite wide, you put it in too soon, just keep taking baby off and let baby learn. I feel like this is one part of the issue. And even the hospital setting, like we're so in a rush to like get women out the door, discharge them and they need to feed before they go. So we just quickly, and even parents, we're just like, we just want to feed our babies, like let's just want them to get something. So we just rush the process. And when as soon as that baby's mouth's open, ever so slightly, we just chuck it in. And that's when the baby suckles on your nipples, you get sore nipples and things like that. And that's why the golden hour is amazing because you're just taking your time and allowing baby to take its time to learn. If there is no rush to feed your baby, please just give your baby time to use its senses and just get used to the whole opening mouth wide, flexing back, latching on, okay? Um, so that's how you would position your baby and latch on. In terms of other positions, so I've shown you, uh, you know, a common one, which is cross cradle. Um, if you've had a cesarean section, a rugby ball, rugby ball hold is amazing um, because it's basically holding your baby away from your abdomen, the wound, but chin will still apply. So you still want your baby. So rugby hold is essentially holding the baby with the same side arm as the breast that you're feeding from so cross cradle is the opposite arm rugby hall hold is the same arm and same concept supply so you want the baby nice and close so the baby's tummy needs to be touching the side of your so you know basically your skin close you want to keep the head free I do find with this position a lot of mums are much more confident in supporting baby with one hand just because they know that they can't use this hand so consciously they're just more conscious about using this hand to um support baby and again you might want to have you know cushions and pillows and pregnancy pillows if you guys get a pregnancy pillow um, a breastfeeding pillow if you've got a pregnancy pillow just use your pregnancy pillow breastfeeding pillows that are like really nice and cute with that 
use it, shape, um, and really hard are absolutely useless. They're so hard, it makes it very difficult to actually position the baby and put the baby down. I find either the baby's way too high or way too low. So I would say use cushions, pillows, a pregnancy pillow, you know, the ridiculously long ones that you can hug and whatever, just because they're much more softer, so it's much more easier to have your baby down. So you could use that to support your baby. And then the same thing would apply. You would do nose to nipple, wait for the mouth to open up wide and latch on. If you find that your baby prefers one breast in this position, but doesn't like the other breast, you could try using the rugby ball on the other breast. I don't know what it is. Like maybe it's the position of the baby on that breast that makes them think that they're on this breast, but they do tend to take the least favorite feet um, a breast with the rugby ball. Um, another reason why rugby ball could be great is when you do become a bit more confident with feeding, it gives you hands free, you can mobilize while you're breastfeeding um, and hold your baby. Um, and yeah, it just gives you a bit more freedom. Um, another position is koala bear. So koala bear is essentially just your baby sitting on your lap, um, literally like a koala bear. So you want to keep baby nice and close like this. So baby's um, everything's in line as you can see baby's able to flex its head back you would support your baby like so you want to use your elbow like the kink in your arm to just support the body um, and just get a grip of baby and then again you'll do nose to nipple flex head head will flex back mouth will open wide and then you can put baby on this position is great if you have a fast letdown if your baby has reflux if your um um oh, what other reason could you do this if any of the other positions aren't working for you this is a great position because baby just has a lot more space to work with to basically teach yourself to latch on um a rugby ball is basically like if you think about how people hold a rugby ball they hold it under their arm so you're basically holding your baby like a rugby ball under your arm to get the baby latched on um the last position is laid back so laid back is a position that we you would do at home um and probably in the hospital, it's quite hard to do it when you're out and about. But laid back is essentially your reclined back, nice and relaxed. And this normally happens when you first have your baby and like vaginal birth, you're lying on your bed and you place the baby skin to skin. So but laid back is essentially your baby is in between your chest, lying, and you just leave baby alone. Um, I love this position because it just gives baby the time. It's a bit like golden hour. You're giving baby the time to just, you know, bop around, use the senses to get familiar with your breasts and just kind of teach itself to latch on. A lot of mums and even healthcare professionals don't talk about this position enough, in my opinion, and don't practice it just because it does take a while for baby to do. But at the same time, that's kind of the point. We don't want to rush baby. We don't want to force baby. And we do want baby to learn in its own time. So if you are struggling with any of the other positions, this can either be your first go-to or it can be the last, last position you try if the others aren't working for you. So remember, close, head free, in line, nose to nipple and lead in with the chin.